You open up the Battle.net gaming client, try to jump into a quick game of Call of Duty Warzone. You navigate to the Call of Duty Modern Warfare title in your gaming library, and you click the play button. And move on to the Connecting to Online Services splash screen, at which point the game fails to load. In this instance, we stayed waiting on this screen for approximately three minutes, and the game never successfully connected to the online services. So what we're going to do is press the Windows key on the lower left of our keyboard. And that's going to pull up the Windows Start menu. And it's also going to give us access to the Windows taskbar. We're going to take the mouse cursor and we're going to hover over. And we're going to right click that Windows Start menu icon. And that's going to give us a context menu. And we're going to scan up and we're going to look for Windows PowerShell and depending on your system, that option may be called Command Prompt, depending on how your Windows installation is installed, whether it's configured to utilize Windows PowerShell or Command Prompt. But there should be the option to select one or the other. In this case, we're going to select the Windows PowerShell. Once we click that, we may receive a user account control notification from Windows asking us if we would like to allow Windows PowerShell to run and make changes on this system. We're going to click Yes. Once we click Yes, we'll see the PowerShell window appear. And we can see the Call of Duty Warzone game is still attempting to connect to the online services in the background. Step 1. We're going to attempt to release the IP configuration from the active adapters currently installed in the system. So we're going to type ipconfig, that's I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, ipconfig, space, forward slash, release, R-E-L-E-A-S-E. -E. And then we're going to press the enter key on our keyboard. And you can see immediately... The Call of Duty Warzone loading screen has finally moved past the connecting to online services. The PowerShell has printed out the current configuration for the active adapters installed in the system. And since we just released the IP configuration, much of the information should be should be empty. Step 2. Well, we are in the command prompt or PowerShell window. We're going to also flush the DNS cache just in case the cache has become corrupted as well. And to do that, we're going to next type ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS. And then we're going to press enter on our keyboard. And we should receive a message that the task has completed successfully. Step 3. And the final step we're going to take is to renew the IP configuration for the active adapters installed in the system. So next we're going to type ipconfig space forward slash renew, R-E-N-E-W. And we're going to press enter on our keyboard. And then we're going to wait for PowerShell command prompt to print out the current configuration for the active adapters installed in the system. And once it does that, it should repopulate the IP addresses, the DNS suffix, the subnet mask, the default gateway information. And now that we've gone through those three steps, we're going to close the command prompt or PowerShell window. And here we've received an error on the game loading screen that says server has been disconnected. Configuration of the Blizzard game server has been lost. Please exit and try again. Error code, and then it gives an error code and a button that we can click to quit to the desktop. That's to be expected because we did release the IP address, we flushed the DNS cache, and then we renewed the IP configuration. So everything that was connected to the internet from this system should have been interrupted. So we're going to click quit to desktop. And once all of the Windows background processes related to the game have terminated, we will receive access to the play button in the Battle.net gaming client. So we're going to try to click play again from the Call of Duty Warzone gaming title in our library. And we can see the progress loading screen complete. 
And now, we've moved on to the splash screen. And now we're connecting to online services. We'll see if it gets past this screen. And here we go, checking for update, fetching online profile, and now we're in the Warzone menu. We'll attempt to jump into a match just to ensure the game is working properly. And the map appears to be loading correctly. The first thing we notice is the game seems blurry and washed out. What probably has happened is the game has reset our graphics settings, our graphics preferences. So what we're going to do is enter the settings menu by pressing the escape key on our keyboard. And then we're going to click options and then we're going to click graphics. And you can see it changed our display mode from full screen to full screen borderless. So we're going to switch that back to full screen exclusive and it also changed our render resolution to 50. We're going to change that back to 100% and that should match the resolution of our monitor which in this case is 3440 by 1440. So we're going to put that back to 100% and that should make the in-game graphics a lot clearer. And then if you'd like to speed up some of the asset loading of the map, you can scroll down and enable caching of some of the map resources. And in this case, we'll enable cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows. And then we'll click apply. And then we'll go back into the game. And as we parachute down, we see the map looks a little bit clearer now. It doesn't look as blurry. It doesn't look as washed out. And this was a before where the buildings were a little more blurry and the colors were a little more washed out. And it was also a little harder to see the opposition. Now that it's a little less blurry, we can see the buildings more clearly. The terrain is a little crisper, a little sharper, and we can identify opponents from a further, further distance now that they're not as blurry. So we appear to have full game functionality after resolving the issue utilizing these steps. So if you have this issue in the future, you can try these three steps and see if it resolves the issue on your system as well.